My name is Andrea and I welcome you to the coastal hammock of the Bonnet House. We planted some Kunti plants here, a Florida native cycad, actually the only cycad you can find in North America. And if you look at the root bulbs of this plant, you can see it's pretty big, it continues underground. And Native Americans knew how to extract the starch from these bulbs and they used it to make bread and to cook with. It's not that easy to do that, however, because that starch initially has a water-soluble toxin or many toxins, especially one, um, which uh, we'll see later is very important for one of the host plants of this um, cycad, the Atala butterfly. So the Atala butterfly, and here is a photograph of a male butterfly. It's a small butterfly with, in the hair streak family. It has blackish wings and you can see these iridescent blue spots on this butterfly. It has a red torso and a red spot on the wings and um, the legs and some of the torso are also covered with that iridescent blue color. The female is going to lay her eggs on the kunti leaves on the underside. They're inconspicuous. We don't have any here. She sometimes coats it uh, with uh, some material so that it looks even more inconspicuous and isn't eaten by other animals. And in due time, these larvae or caterpillars will hatch out of the eggs. You can see they're kind of a bright orangey brown with yellow spots. This is very easy to detect for other animals, but once they've eaten one of these caterpillars once, they're never going to do it again because uh, the animal is full of these toxins from the kunti plant. They voraciously eat the leaves. You can see that. They can actually destroy a whole plant um, in a short time. And in, by doing so, they incorporate the toxins, which are bitter and slightly poisonous to whoever wants to eat them. And during the life cycle of this particular butterfly, um, all the individuals will have that residual um, toxin in them. So when these larvae pupate, um, Eating the pupa is not going to taste very good because it's bitter and toxic. And ultimately, the pupae uh, will result in the beautiful, colorful Atala butterflies. And they're poisonous too. And then, of course, after due time, in less than two weeks, the females will lay eggs and the whole cycle starts over again. Now, there's an interesting connection between the, um, the kunti and the atala. Because the kunti is the only plant that these butterflies will put their, lay their eggs on, you have to have kuntis around in order to have atalas. And in the late 1800s, the atala butterfly was considered the most conspicuous insect in South Florida. They were all over. But more and more people harvested these root bulbs from the kunti, and at some point in the early 1900s, where there were not a lot of kuntis left. They'd all been uh, digested by humans, pretty much. By 1950, the Atala butterfly was considered extinct. But fortunately, in the late 70s, someone discovered a little colony in the, um, in a hammock uh, off of Miami on one of the barrier islands, and um, they took some of the, uh, the they took some of the larvae, the caterpillars, and um, because Fairchild Gardens has a large collection of kuntis and other cycads, they managed to propagate the atala there, and since a few years, Florida is more and more interested in planting native plants like kuntis. You'll find them in many gardens. And the Atala butterfly has enjoyed a fabulous comeback, so we can see them more and more often. I have a very big kunti in my yard. I mean, very big means like this big. They, they grow very slowly, and I've had this thing for nearly 20 years. Unfortunately, this year, I don't have any Atala butterflies on it, but 
I do have it on a very small kunti, and that kunti is nearly eaten up. But I enjoy these little butterflies so much, and um, don't mind their larvae at all. They can feed on my kunti anytime.